Welcome back to the Hancock Hill Homestead today. Uh, hope y'all uh, had a good week or so, and I've been uh, busy doing some other things, and just kind of wanted to give you an update. Mom's doing super well, super good. She's uh, hanging in there with me. She's been tough to deal with sometimes, but you know I enjoy a bit dealing with mom. She's she's a good uh, good sport about a lot of things. I can cut up with her, and uh, <laughs> overall, me and her have a good time. We we talk junk to one another. We do all sorts of other things. We had a a good treat yesterday. We had a my granddaughter Madison Grace came and stayed with us yesterday and we had a we had a ball we had to take care of her and make sure we you know kept her entertained for a couple of hours while her, her mom was off doing some errands for her granddad and stuff but uh <clears throat> we had a we had a blast um just wanted to kind of throw a few things up playing catch up yeah i've got some more few peas and i'll pick i gotta pick some more I uh, got a break okra this morning, and I uh, got somebody already called wanting some. So that's why I said, Brother Jimmy is on the way, and uh, I think I got to get Brother Rick some. Uh, he uh, called a week or two ago, and I hadn't had a chance to get him any, but hopefully I can get him some today. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to give him exactly what he wants, but giving him some to help him out. But <clears throat> if you'll notice today, I'm in the greenhouse, uh, my little throw up hurry up and get done greenhouse but anyway i've been busy the last w uh, week or so tacking up the corners you know like right here in the corner i had to put a board in and i put one in the middle on the side here and then i'll show you that in just a second and you'll see i mean that's why i said i put a board in so that way when the top when the plastic rolls down that it uh do all right but uh <clears throat> got other things planted in here my wife's been busy. You see this little plant here? So I don't know exactly what she's got planted, but we got several of them coming up. And this is our winter crop and stuff. But I got something else that I'm very proud to say that we've worked on and they're coming on along super well. And somebody said, you got a greenhouse to do this? Well, yeah, here it is. And that's what I said. I got tomatoes. I got tomatoes growing in the greenhouse. And that's what I said. I uh, got some that's got a bloom on them or two. So down here at the end, I got some blooms already coming on. So uh, that's why I said it's it's something to you know just to go a little bit further. What it is, I took some old boxes that I had collected. You know, I told you I collect wood, and I like collecting the wood because the wood <clears throat> doesn't hold. It doesn't hold it so hot. They don't hold it, and it lets water out. And it also is a good thing to add into. And I took some uh, some stuff I bought at Tractor Supply and stuff like that, and some dirt and some wood chips that I got in a in a pile, and I've mixed them together in here. And you see, they're doing super good. And I got them tied up with strings, going holding them up, so that way they'll grow on up taller. And I still got the shade cloth on because it's still a little hot yet, but. Uh, they're doing super good. They're growing fast. Uh, we also got some uh, turnips. We got uh, two types of mustard. We got some spinach planted, um, some radishes, maybe some beets. I know we got lettuce planted. And I'm trying to think of all what me and Dorothy has planted. And that's why I said I can't do it without her because she's, she's super good about being able to help me keep focus on certain things we need to do and getting ahead of trying to get things done we got things that still i'm collecting out of the old garden the summer garden that when then we're moving forward into winter garden and i got some planted in the field but i got some planted in here too because uh, sometimes you know i'm trying to have see how i do with tomatoes in the later part of the year because a lot of times with the fog and the dew that falls, it does something to tomato plants that tomato plants just don't like. They don't like uh, something about the whatever is in the thing. I know they use some kind of chemical spray or whatever to do watermelons and, and tomatoes during the fall year. And 
you know, it, you don't know what's in those chemicals. So why would you want to put it on your plants? Then you wind up eating it and it may cause you to have some other, other problems. You know, I'm not saying I'm a hundred percent organic. I'm not, uh, but I do believe in certain things that we can prevent to keep from getting certain things. A lot of things that are being sprayed today and whatever else like that and uh, genetically modified, I don't know if that's good for us because, you know, that's not the way God intended. God intended us to be able to reap the harvest from things that we grow. He gave us, and it says in the scripture, he gave us certain things to be able to provide for ourselves. He gave us fruit with seeds inside for us to be able to use the seed to be able to do that. Um, that's like tomatoes. You know, you can take a tomato. Uh, if you don't let it dry completely out, then the seeds are just later. You can put them in the ground. They don't mean they're going to come up. They got to dry completely out to get that, that membrane that's around the seed. It's like that. It's on the seed. It's, it's got to dry this out before the seed can really start growing again. And that's the same way it is with peas, corn, and other things. You know, that's why it's got the shuck around the corn. Uh, peas has got a hole on it. That it's, inside that hole is a membrane. If you don't believe me, when you get a green one, peel it, and look inside the hole, you'll see there's a membrane or something in there that keeps the, keeps the pea fresh and it keeps it from doing whatever. But we still have those little bugs that like to go through the, they pierce it, you know, and uh, it's like a bow weevil or it's whatever. He's got a long snoot and he does that. Same with, uh, same way it is with a vine borer or either, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. There's one that's called an assassin bug. He's got a long prong and he jabs in there and he pulls out just a little bit and then sits there and sucks the juice. And what he does, he winds up killing the squash plant or your pumpkin or either like that. And then you get the line, the worm, the vine borers, which go inside and they stay on the inside and crawl around and eat from the inside. So it winds up killing the, the vine same way. But um, a lot of people don't believe that there's things do that, but same way it is with the fog. Um, a lot of farmers spray their late watermelons and their cantaloupes and stuff like that. They spray it with a, uh, it's some kind of film. I can't think of the name of it. I don't ask me those high high tech words, but they spray it and it puts a film over the plant so the water will bead off like a wax. It really is what it is. It's like a wax. So like being in this greenhouse, that's why I got it. You know, I protect the from whatever's falling out of the air. It comes down, hits the plant, and winds up killing it. That's why I still got tomatoes living, and you know that's what you got to do. But anyway, I. I built this greenhouse, started last year, um, probably before I retired and started working on it. I've had some help from several of my friends and I can't mention them all because I've had a bunch of them. My grandsons helped me, my wife, um, several of them has helped. And, you know, it's just a, a dream of mine. I wanted to have one to be able to see what I could do and how I could do better, but it's nothing fancy. It's nothing, uh, but I've had wood laying around and I use pieces of it and I have found some old metal post that's been uh, crushed up, thrown down in a hole or whatever like that. And I found some new ones in one of my neighbors, like in past video, one of my guys on the fire department, his, he was in Ruby right there in on main street that a whole bundle of them had fell off a truck or whatever and was laying on the shoulder of the road. So I stopped and I texted him. I said, these y'all's post. I said, if it's not, you know, if it is, I'll, move them on in the yard, but if not, I'm going to take them with me. He said, no, take them, take them, get them. And anyway, that's how I wound up with them. Uh, so pretty much everything I got here is something that's been used or left over. Same way with these doors, these storm doors. I got them, you know, one of them was one that I had, had damage to or whatever. And it got damaged in the storm and blew the wind, blew it open. And I think it's the one on this side. And there's one on the other side, one of my neighbors had, uh, their dad had used to do remodeling and stuff. And they had a bunch of people always call, I want a new storm door. So they'd go get a new storm door and put it up. And then he'd have the old one laying around. Some of them would have the glass busted out of them. Uh, this one over here on this side has got a glass that the frame was broke on the bottom. 
and I talked with one of my neighbors and I asked him, I said, I said, you got any more? I said, I'd like to get one more of those uh, window panes out of one of them other. He said, well, just come on. I said, well, I'll wait till you're home. You know, I ain't going to go when I'm doing that. But, uh, you know, that's, that's how I get stuff. You know, I just kind of talk it up, barter, you know, change around. Um, the big thing is, you know, and I've seen it, I like watching YouTube and I hear about it all the time. I've been watching this now with several of the homestead channels and stuff and there's one called free freestanding or free homesteading or something like that i can't remember right off yet i had to get it back to you on that one but it's a it's an open forum that you can talk about certain things you can talk to your neighbors you once you sign up it shows who is trying to do some kind of preparedness or uh canning or preserving or gardening or or anybody doing anything like working on tractors, working on four-wheelers, working on boats, because guess what? I ain't showed you this, but in my greenhouse, guess what I got? I got a boat. See, I got a boat in here. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but, you know, when you are limited on space that you need to be able, and you done put something under the under the shelter that you had somewhere, or you're using the trailer that you usually keep the boat on and you just need somewhere to stick it right quick so i slid it in on the little little thing you put flowers on a stand i slid it up on top of it and it's been sitting in here um i was supposed to use it when i went fishing last time with my son but we didn't get to use it so i um, just kind of you know slid it off the trailer so i could use the trailer and it's been in here i want to go it's just that my time and my things that need to get done hasn't allowed me to be able to go yet um hopefully it's going to turn around for me i can do that excuse me but uh i got hiccups this morning they've been on and off and i don't know why i don't know what's going on but but anyway that's why i said this is my little greenhouse on the inside i've been out here working for the last off and on for the last week and a week last week because the other times i was up there making sure mom was all right making sure that she uh, uh was able not to pick up anything heavy uh make sure she did her eye drops you know doing all the things that the doctor recommends you to do when you have cataract surgery and you know some people say well you know it's hard for me to do that yeah i know it is and that's why i said you have to have somebody around to make sure you do things and I'm, I'm sorry for the ones who sometimes they don't have a family member to make sure they're able to do that you know we need to make sure you look in on your neighbors but uh doing that and that's another topic to bring up um one thing that i've been seeing and like i was talking about a while ago is on the homestead channels that they're talking about is the way the economy is nowadays the way things are going and this goes back a lot of people on here that's a lot older than me that knows what i'm talking about in the old days people didn't people didn't really take in uh really buy anything a whole lot because they didn't have money to buy because my grandmother that's why i said both my grandmothers i mean i remember stories and they talk about it they didn't have stuff the money to buy stuff with my grandmother where lives where i'm living now she said when she was small her mom and them would take eggs and carry it to the to the uh country store and trade the eggs she would like trade two dozen eggs for maybe a pound or two of flour or either a piece of uh something else you know like a, a piece of rock candy because i mean people are like what do you do with rock candy guess what that's what they used back then to be able to make certain things sweet or either they would trade it for a jar of honey or something that you didn't have so it's coming back to that time we got to look and work in together with each other who does have something to trade i'm sorry for the people who doesn't grow anything doesn't raise any animals uh doesn't really think about it but if you got apple trees in your yard pear trees grapes or if you can grow a few things in the garden and you have something extra 
then that's something to barter with. That's something to change with, to swap things with. It's not really about how much you swap the good old American George Washington dollar. It's more about how you can take something you got and trade it for something that you need. Um, I know in the old days that, I've, you know, people used to help one another out. When it come time to kill hogs or chickens or whatever like that, you know, people would come over and they, they'd go to help and you do that. Guess what? When you got through killing the hog that day, they sent you home with meat. You know, everybody always wound up giving them a little portion of the meat, you know, because they worked so hard that day. You know, and, you know, that be that's something to be thankful for. Did you, you worked hard for, you gave your labor for the meat that you carried home to feed your family. People don't realize that even when you, you're processing chickens, you know, uh, it takes a little bit of effort. You got to get the water going. You got to get it set up for a place that you can do that. You got to have a torch or some newspaper or brown paper bag. We don't have brown paper bags. People just don't realize how many things uses a brown paper bag is. But, you know, you take it and you swing the hairs off of a chicken. People are like, swing the hair. Yeah, when you pluck a chicken, it leaves a little hair that you got to swing. And, you know, or either take a propane torch and do the same thing. And uh, it's, it's a lot of work. And then you got to, you know, get the instrals out and a lot of other things. But anyway, just wanted to jump on here this morning and kind of explain something. But if you know somebody that's got a, something that you need or whatever like that, and if they're willing to give you part of it or either swap something for it or either, you know, look out for your neighbor, you know, um, you got to do what you got to do. There's always something that somebody's got that you need or either you got something they need. And it's, it's best to work it out and try not to worry about because... You know, certain things you can't buy at the grocery store. But anyway, I just wanted to jump on here a quick minute, tell you all about some things. And free homesteading, I think is the name of it is, talking about the free man. Um, look it up. Freehomesteading.com, I think is it. Check it out. Look into it. You may want to subscribe. If not, you understand. We, we understand that too. But um, it's an open forum that you can ask certain questions. Uh, Look at it and see who you may wind up being close to you that you don't never know. But anyway, thank you again for visiting the Hancock Hill Homestead page. And I know I run my mouth a lot, but I got a lot of work to do this morning. I'm trying to rush it up and get it done. But I'm going to let you have one more look at my little mater plants. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, don't forget, if you want to comment, please do. I got several of them, you know. One of them even asked me, where's my watermelon? I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't have but a few, but uh, chickens like leftover watermelons. You don't like them because they're a little bit smelly, but the chickens love them. But anyway, thank y'all. I appreciate you visiting the Hancock Hill Homestead. Don't forget to, you know, tell somebody you love them. It may be your last time. Thank the Lord, too, for everything he gives us and whatever he does. But get a quick look at these here, and I'm going to be get the water in them. I got to put a little water in the boxes, but anyway, I appreciate y'all. And then, yeah, my water hose is hanging up. That's because it's running off rainwater, not off of the chlorine water. But anyway, y'all have a great day. See you on the next visit.